I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our viewers to what we are saying is a month of our seniors. And in Okaloosa, in a couple weeks, we're gonna have students walking across the stage and they'll end their high school years. But one of the things that makes this day special, it's a special day for me, is the fact that it's everything that happened before graduation day. It's that first day in kindergarten, it's fourth grade science fair, it's sixth grade sports or band or chorus, and then it might be prom. It's all of those memories that our seniors had that helped prepare them for this special day in approximately two weeks. And we're doing a segment to our seniors throughout the entire month. It's this venue today, but it's also our social media campaign where we're highlighting seniors throughout this month. So today we're gonna to hear from three students. We've already heard from three others. And we're gonna learn about their journey through high school, about what some of their plans are for the future. And I think that we have three fantastic ladies who are with us today. We have Stella, who's with us today from Baker. We have Paige, who's with us from Niceville. And then we have Callie, who's with us from Laurel Hill. And good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. And do me a favor, just briefly, um, just kind of share who you are and maybe a point or two about high school and kind of where you're going. We'll start with you. Okay, I'm Stella Hurley and I'm from Baker High School, which is K through 12, so I've been there almost most of my life, except, well, I came there in second grade, so it's kind of like my second home. But after I graduate, I plan to go to UNF which is in Jacksonville to pursue a bachelor's in nursing. And I hope to continue my education to eventually become a nurse practitioner. Fantastic, thank you, Stella. Paige? My name is Paige Doloff and I'm from Niceville. I've grown up in the Niceville area my whole life. So from Blue Water to Ruckel to Niceville, I've been here through it all. After high school, I plan to go to the United States Air Force Academy and hopes to be a pilot and study aeronautical engineering. Have you heard the new Top Gun movies out? No, <laughs> I've watched. I've heard it's out. Are you gonna watch it? Yes, I'm planning on it. All right, excellent, Callie. My name is Callie Steele from Laurel Hill School. Laurel Hill is also K through 12, and I've been there since pre-K. Wow. <laughs> um, after high school, I plan to attend UCF and study forensics. One of the things that we talk about in Okaloosa County is we want to have students that when they graduate, they're prepared for college, they're prepared for military, or they're prepared for the workforce and you have the skills necessary to be successful when they graduate high school. And like I shared with the previous three today, you guys are three fine examples of that as well. So I want to get right into it. I want you to think back to your years from kindergarten all the way to your senior year. And what are some moments, what are some moments that really stick out to you, some special moments about your time here at Okaloosa Schools? Um, honestly, starting at Blue Water, you walk in and it's like, wow, and you get one class and you think it's crazy that you switch classes with other teachers. And then from that to Ruckel, where you have six classes, and just the whole transition period is super fun. And especially one of my favorites at Blue Water is the plays and the dances, like the Valentine's dance, and you think that's super cool. And I just had prom this weekend, and it's just how it all builds off of each other, and I really enjoyed all of that. I love it, especially when you think about the an elementary dance mm -hmm. leading up yeah. to your, your prom, prom, right? Yeah. So yeah. That, that's pretty neat. So I started <clears throat> off at Walker and it, I don't remember a ton because it was like kindergarten and first grade, but there is one thing that I really, I will never forget this, is that there are custodial people there that after school, my mom worked there as a literacy coach, so we would be in the library, probably in their way the whole time as they're trying to clean. But honestly, they were the most fun ever. They got us our own little sticks and put the tennis balls on them. So we'd go around the floors and we'd scuff up all the stuff off the floors and just hang out with them. And they taught us how to like line up all the tables in the library and take ping pong balls and like try to hit each table. And we just had so much fun with them and they made being there and being teacher's kids, which is not always the most fun thing to do, but they made it so much fun. And then I went to Baker as much as I love Walker. Baker is definitely, it, like I said earlier, it's my home. It's the place that I want to come back to one day. And one person there that I feel like has really impacted my life is this teacher, Miss Griffith. And I had her for geometry and pre-calculus. So I had her in middle school and high school. 
And I always remember I would leave that class, especially pre-calculus, and I'd just be staring at my homework and looking at her like, everything you just said is just out of my brain right now. And so she'd say, okay, come back during lunch. And her son, he has a disability, so she would be in there um, feeding him at lunch and taking care of him and then tutoring me on math. And now I have this realization like, okay, that one period that she actually had her lunch break to sit and relax, like, and take care of her family, like, she was tutoring me. And I feel like that's what I've noticed about Oglusa County, like, throughout all my experiences in being here is from custodians, administration, teachers, like these are all people, they really care about the students and they want you to have fun and they want you to succeed despite what people think about all their rules and regulations. So. so it's funny as you're saying that, you know, two thoughts come to my mind. Is one, as a school district, we're not perfect, right? I mean, nobody can be perfect, but it's, it's what's also over here on this wall over here. It says everyone's important and it goes on to say, or, or no one's important and it's the custodians that make a difference. And a lot of times we think about teachers, we think about principals, but we don't necessarily mention custodians or the front office folks or the bus drivers. It takes everybody to run a school district. So the fact that uh, custodians come to mind of a great experience, that really makes me happy. Um, starting at Laurel Hill in pre-K and then all the way up like through school, all of my teachers have known me pretty much my entire life. So they've been very involved in my life. And I think that helped a lot like in school because you're so very comfortable with everybody. But one, I think one of my favorite things like throughout school was participating in Spirit Week at Homecoming because it's just like it happens every year. It's always a good time. So Homecoming, everyone remember their Homecoming? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, uh... I, I can think back to my high school years right now. I, I can remember homecoming, but where I grew up, you had like homecoming like as a ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. It was like a big mm -hmm. deal every single year. But uh, good times, right? Yes. So I want you to think back to your ninth grade year and where you are today. What advice would you give your ninth grade self? I had a lot of decisions to make in ninth grade, big decisions, and I would probably tell myself that I was making the right decisions and that it's all going to turn out okay and to slow down a little bit. Because <laughs> you can probably remember going into ninth yeah. grade, you were thinking, oh my gosh, what is this going to be like, yes. right? And that I was just, I was making the right choices and... Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Um, kind of same with that, just being very open-minded about everything because starting to make choices like throughout elementary and middle school, you didn't really pick classes and you're like mm -hmm. starting to pick classes. For me, I was in at least six sports in middle school and I was like, I, you can't do that in high school, like you have to decide. <laughs> and so just all the decisions, just don't, don't let it overwhelm you. Like whatever you choose, it's going to end up okay and take you to where, where you want to go in life. So. Just being open, don't getting too down on yourself, like, should I take pre-calc or trig? Like, it's not going to be the end of the world. Don't, don't stress over little things because they're really mm -hmm. not, I mean, they're important, but now looking back, it's like, wow, that was an issue to me. Just mm -hmm. don't let it go. Mm -hmm. Live life. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I would say, especially going through to a K-12 through school, when you get to your junior and senior year, there's not as many class options. So for me, especially these last two years, I drive to Niceville four days a week for class. And my 10th grade year, that was the year that COVID hit. And so since my ninth grade year, I haven't really had the opportunity just to be with my classmates in all my classes, all together, all of us in the same space. And I think that's something I really miss. And I've, especially this year, had to put a lot more effort into trying to be there and taking classes I don't need just to hang out with friends and build those relationships. But I would tell myself to really invest in people and just enjoy that aspect of it because um, I really wish that I could have had it last longer. So invest in people, you know, not take things too seriously. Things are going to work out. Of course, that's good if you have a good work ethic, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're making good choices, which all of you have. But I think that's great advice to your ninth grade self. Now, one thing that you said, um, you talked about the last two years a little bit. How has the last two years impacted you? 
It's definitely like when COVID first hit, it was, I mean, nobody really knew what was going on, but it's, I feel like it's almost made me more, not say tech savvy, but just the way like the platforms it's out on, it's almost super easy to be on Schooly for a sport and be able to catch up with that. But it's also been very hard, like getting back going. And I know from uh, Stella's perspective, I mean, I've been very fortunate at NICE where we have so many AP classes, so many uh, op opportunities that are available. So I wish that was available throughout the whole Okaloosa County. But it's honestly, like last year was hard with the COVID barriers, but this year I feel like it's gotten back going a lot better. That's from my I would say for Baker, COVID, we, it was definitely tough my 10th grade year, but 11th and 12th grade, we really started really getting back into it. I would say the last two years for me has really been making decisions on like what I'm going to do with my life and um, what I'm going to invest my time into. And I think that a lot of people going through like the junior, senior year, they think that they have to like know everything right away and that everything's just going to come to them in this perfect order and it being a perfectionist like myself it was hard for me just to like let things go and not try to do everything and so i think i've learned a lot in the past two years about time management and choosing what i want to do and sticking with it and um like making sure i put my all into everything that i make a decision to do okay. Kelly, i started dual enrollment in the beginning of 10th grade, I think it was. And so I got more heavy into it in 11th and 12th. And so doing that, I wasn't at school like as much because my classes, I would end at lunchtime and so then I would go to college. And that, like not being present in everything really kind of, like you don't have as many friendships because like you're not there. So nobody really, it's definitely different. And you don't feel as like that you're there, I guess. <laughs> so I want you to think about this. Uh, your ninth grade year was your last, you know, quote, normal mm -hmm. school year, right? Definitely. Your ninth grade year. Yeah. And then, of course, this first nine weeks of your senior year, arguably, was even more difficult than your junior year, the start. And now we're starting to get a little bit back to you know, a more normal um, life and a more normal school year. <clears throat> but the thing that I'm so proud of is students like yourself who, through all of that adversity, all of that difficulty, you know, you still challenged yourself, you still kept moving forward academically, athletically, in the arts, and really doing good things. So there are many people who are going to be even better off because of the challenges that they went through. So think back to the start of this school year, August of 2021. You were going to be a senior, right? What advice would you give to next year's seniors? Uh, apply for college in the summer. <laughs> 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 because you keep pushing it off and you're like, I want to enjoy summer. And then you get to the first semester of your senior year and then you're like, well, I want to be a senior now. And there's <laughs> It, there's deadlines and you want to take those ACT scores so just do it early and don't be stressed because then second semester you're just like pushing through the finish line and looking forward to college and there's never a, I always thought like okay first semester I'm applying gonna know where I'm gonna go second semester is gonna be super fun I'm just gonna enjoy life and I'm not saying I'm not but there's still a, a task list and it's not completely empty like I thought it was going to be so there's always something to do so just get ahead get a head start it's my best don't advice. procrastinate don't procrastinate, don't procrastinate. <laughs> I would probably say to myself, like, stay plugged in. Um, like kind of what I was saying earlier, find a way to be present and to make an impact in your school. And I think I see this in a lot of the clubs and sports and everything that I've been involved in. A lot of seniors, especially since COVID, have kind of, we checked out way earlier than we're supposed to check out. Usually it's like spring break and they're all done. But I've seen the trend of not as much involvement just because it's hard after you go completely online to now suddenly changing and being back in person and wanting to be there all the time. And so I would probably um, tell myself and well, any other senior that like find a way to be involved because they're looking for senior leaders in every club. Like they're looking to have a 12th grader to have that role and to be that person to influence the people underneath them. And so I would tell people and 
myself just to find a way to make an impact and be a leader in something. Okay. So don't procrastinate. Stay involved. <laughs> Definitely start talking about college and applying to places. Do not wait till last minute to do that. And I would tell them that no matter how long the days seem, they go by very fast. Take your time, slow down, and enjoy everything, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So for our students who, who may be watching this as well, I think that's great advice, especially for our next year seniors. Don't procrastinate, get involved, and the senior year goes by quickly. Think about challenges that you had throughout your educational journey, whether it was elementary, whether it was middle school, whether it was high school, whether it was three weeks ago. What was a challenge that, that happened to you throughout your educational journey and how were you better because of it? How did, it, how did you have to persevere? How were you better because of it? I've struggled a lot, like the, especially the past few years with anxiety. And so like going into high school, which it wasn't as bad at Laurel Hill because you know everybody, so it wasn't too bad. But then you're starting to drive and then I started taking college classes and it was a lot. But I think I'm doing much better now. And I've managed to like control my anxiety some and it's not as bad. So I think that's doing good a little bit. So I want you to hear me. When I was your age, mm -hmm. I could have never done something like this. <laughs> never. I would have never done something like this. So the fact that you're able to do this and I've seen a little I never bit thought of you. that I would, but you're right. <laughs> You're doing a great job so and being able to overcome mm -hmm. and all of us deal with uh, anxiety from time to time I know I do as well but uh, we, we get over it and you're doing a great job I think I've been I've been stressing about giving a speech at graduation <laughs> since ninth grade <laughs> and here I am next week <laughs> and I will see you there as well, by yes the way. sir so I, I definitely agree with what she has to say and something a different aspect is through educational like purposes, but um, your friend groups, because uh, for me, like elementary school, if you're in like the gifted class, you're in the same class basically every year, K through five, mm -hmm. so you're with the same people all the time. Then going to Ruckle was a little bit of a switch, but definitely high school where we have the Destin Middle comes over from Niceville, and your you friends, like you're always with the same group, and they start to like scatter, and some people may go down this path and make these choices and some go down this path and make these choices but you can't really like that's where you have to become your own leader and not a follower because you want to do what like your head is telling you to do and you what you want to do in the future you can't follow your friends so that's like a really big jump in high school because you're not always going to be with those group of people you have to start doing stuff on your own and if you don't believe in what they're doing or stuff like that you just have to learn to be a adult in ninth grade which is really shocking because especially like homecoming and I feel like all the dances have so much drama like who are you going with all that stuff so just learning to that it's really okay and just whatever you do is what's gonna happen so yeah that's my best yeah I feel like one of the challenges I've had especially this past year would be the fact that we only have like three AP classes. It, we are, everybody's not always on campus, especially in your upperclassmen years. And I've noticed like applying for scholarships and being in like distinguished young women competition and things like that, that your dual enrollment classes, they don't count as much as AP. And so trying to figure out how can I like be a competitor, not necessarily like that, but how can I have a high GPA and do well in school without having those opportunities? But I think in the end, it pushed me to really, okay, I'm gonna make my schedule around school, prioritize my school, I'm gonna drive here and take these hard classes, and it might not be the same amount, so I'll take more. And I feel like it's really developed me into, okay, I have now I have study habits, now I have time management, now I understand what it means to be an adult and go off to college, and. I feel like I've pre it's prepared me for what's going to come and I don't have to be nervous about not knowing what to do or not making the right decisions because it's something that I've been working on this entire year. So, so if you were sitting in my seat right now <clears throat> as superintendent listening to you three talk about those challenges and how you overcome them or stay in the course, it's uh, again, it's something that makes you proud to hear and those listening that they can learn a lot because you only mentioned a couple challenges. And I'm sure you, you can mention three or four more, and three or four more, right? 
And again, it's how we deal with these challenges when we're hit with them that's going to help define who we're going to be. You know, and sometimes when these challenges come, you know, we get pushed back a little bit. But those who say, hey, I'm not going to let it stop me, I'm going to move forward, it helps us grow. Then the next time it's not as difficult, the next time it's not as difficult. So proud of you all for that. And speaking of proud, what would you say if you had to choose one, maybe two, what would be your most proud moment in your educational journey here in Okaloosa Schools? I graduated on Saturday with my two-year degree from Northwest Florida. That Fantastic. is by far my biggest achievement. <laughs> so you graduated not only with your high school diploma, mm -hmm. which you'll do Next another week. week, but also graduated with your AA. Yes, sir. That's fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so more like specifically in last year during COVID, it was hard with like the barriers and the block scheduling. And one like specific incidence was in calculus. It was hard because we hardly finished the material. So it was more of studying on your own. So I had to go online, watch the videos. And then I got to go take the calc exam. And then in July, I found out I actually got a five on it. So that was a proud moment because I feel like, I mean, it definitely, she taught me the material, but we had to also do on our own because we were there twice a week. So that was definitely a proud moment in high school. A lot of hard work on that yes. one. <laughs> I would have to say that my most proud moment would have to be being honored by being prom queen for Baker this year. And I think it was that moment, like a lot of things I've worked for for myself and I've been proud of myself, but when you have other people that actually acknowledge like, hey, she puts in a lot of time and effort and like we enjoy her and we know that she's a genuine person, like that meant the world to me, very much not expecting it, but um, I, it's something I'll never forget. Fantastic. It's so funny just listening to the, to the different uh, proud moments that it's all across the board. So I want you to think for a second about your entire educational journey, elementary through high school. How has Okaloosa Schools prepared you for your next chapter of your life? I would say that especially as I've gotten into high school there's a lot of opportunities to try something different, like especially through some of the committees and things that I've been asked to do, like Okaloosa Youth Leadership Council and new clubs that have been brought in, like Hope Squad or even ones we've always had, like SGA. There's so many different areas of school that's not necessarily just school and sports that you can get involved in, whether it's an internship, um, community service, and you can even shadow people that are in positions like um, within the school board and learn so much about it and I think that Oklahoma County has done a good job at meeting what everybody likes to do and giving everybody an opportunity to um, pursue whatever that they, whatever they're interested in. Excellent. Um, so personally at Niceville we have the gifted program and that was beyond the best thing that could happen because in senior year you get to an internship and like she said you can go out and shadow people and I just think that Oakland County does a great job in not forgetting anyone or anyone in particular. And there's so many opportunities you can take place in and decisions you have to make and just learning and then kind of a different take on things. I learned about myself that I get really overwhelmed when decision making is happening, which is a good thing because there's decisions to make. Or if you went to a school where it's just you're taking these classes, it's like you don't even decide what you're going to take. So I think it really prepares you for the future. And honestly, my future, I realize I don't like making decisions, so I'm going to a place where the decisions are made for me. So it, it realized that, you know, I love all the opportunities and I love that I'm going to have opportunities out there, but I'm really not deciding much more anymore, which is totally okay with me. But Oklahoma County taught me that that's personally what I like or what I don't like. So that's my take. Appreciate it. Being at such a small school like Laurel Hill, I've learned that no matter what, somebody somewhere is willing to help or they know the answer, and if they don't know the answer, they can help find the answer. And then like being in situations like this with the interview um, and on the Youth Leadership Council and being able to be in the leadership class and student council, those, I have a feeling those are really gonna help me in the future, especially just getting more comfortable with talking too. So it's funny just listening here today and earlier today, like I feel like I'm learning something as well. So we all know your, your, all your core classes, your electives that you take, 
all of that's extremely important. The tests that you take, extremely important. But a lot of what you guys have talked about are those other things, whether it's clubs, whether it's programs, you know, whether it's decision making, whether it's you know those who are willing to help, it's all of these other things that come together to help you really become the person uh, that, that you're gonna be. And then you have the ability to give that back as well. So the academics are important, athletics and arts are important, but it's all these other things if you get involved which really helps shape you. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think for a second about post high school, about where you're going, what you're about to do. So I just want you to explain just a little deeper about what does the next chapter look like for you. I plan to attend the University of Central, Central Florida in the fall with my best friend, so I'm hoping that's gonna be exciting. Um, and I want to study forensic science but go more into psychology um, and hopefully one day work for NCIS or one of those kind of places. That's okay, fantastic. Maybe you'll uh, have a, a, a TV show that you'll be able to start as Maybe. well. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> CIS. There we go. Um, so I plan on attending United States Air Force Academy. Like I said, because I don't like making those decisions, but I did decide that. Um, I've always had the desire to serve my country. Gl growing up in Eglin, it gets like engraved in your brain, and neither one of my parents served, so it was 100% my choice. And going out there, I'm excited to open my eyes up to everything, and I'm hoping to study aeronautical engineering and then get a flight s slot as well, and hopefully fly fighters. That is the overall goal, and then just see where, after graduating, where that takes me, because... I hope to be back one, here one day. The pilot, I had the, the pleasure and the honor to, to fly in an F-16 once. Oh, wow. And um, I'll never forget, it was about an hour and 10 minute ride. The first 30 minutes was phenomenal. The next 40 minutes was survival. <laughs> it, uh, it was interesting, but a great experience. And the way that those pilots can feel those Gs and still be able to mm -hmm. uh, have all their faculties about them, their senses about them, that's truly amazing because uh, I didn't have those. But, uh, that was a lot of pressure on your body, so that's fantastic. And yeah. you? So, um, like I talked about earlier, I plan to go to UNF to pursue bachelor's in nursing, and my family, actually, we've gone on a few medical mission trips within our church to Haiti and Jamaica, and that was kind of when I decided this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, just knowing that you can be in a career where you're doing something like you're serving constantly like that's the best feeling I feel like that you can have in just being able to enjoy making connections with your patients and being with people it's something that I've always really um, been attracted to so I'm excited to just continue in that and learn more um, about that so. okay it's pretty neat again you, you, know, you hear what you guys are about to take part in and there were three other students here today, what they're about to take part in, you know, whether it's college, whether it's college and the military. We had a young man who's already starting a company, a little entrepreneur, already has wow. himself a semi-truck, <laughs> which was uh, amazing. So a lot, a lot of great things occurring. Think about your parents. Think about your parents. And I'm sure at different levels, you know, they've done a lot for you over the last uh, 18 years or so, right? What, uh, what words would you like to share with your parents as you're about to graduate now in a, in a couple weeks? Um, thank you for everything. Like, I, when you're young, you don't say, oh, mom, I want to be a swimmer. Like, you have no idea what swimming even is. You, they just throw you in lessons in case you happen to fall in a pool one day, you know what to do. That's what <laughs> most parents tend to do. And then you start to, they throw you in other sports just to get you involved and do stuff. At least it was sports for me, mainly. And just thank you for doing that because if I didn't, I would be, I feel like ac when you do sports or any clubs, like you said earlier, that makes you a better student academically because mm -hmm. you have to learn to prioritize your things. And some people are like, oh, well, I can just do academics all day and be smarter. But I think if you look at the people around Okaloosa County in the top, they're involved with something else. It's not just mm -hmm. academics. So sure. just thank you for do throwing me in stuff. And then finally, it was my decision to like continue to do that and continue to carry on with what they started me in, but I mean, you don't make decisions at a young age to start them in that, and then pushing me all the time, making deals and bets with me. I'm the only, only child, so 
it's just my dad always makes deals with me and that's that gets me motivated and now it's and I mean I do it for myself but before I mean when you're a kid it's like oh if you touch the wall first I'll give you 20 bucks or something like that so just <laughs> thank you for all the little things that built up to who I am today fantastic oh. I would have to, honestly, my parents, they're both in the school system, so I spend time with them <laughs> all day, every day, which stinks when you're in trouble because you, you'd rather go to the principal's office than your mom's room. But honestly, like, my parents, I'm so glad that they were always there. Like, my mom, she was always great with helping and giving me advice during the school day, and I had something that I needed help on or so I was having a bad day, she was right around the corner. Like I always had her there and she was always there for me. And my dad was always the one that would pack my lunch every morning. And then he was my coach after school and would come up. And if I had a bad game, he'd be like, okay, we'll go tonight. We'll go to the gym. We'll fix it right now. And like just having both of them always there, like so supportive, whatever I was trying to go after, they were always right behind me and, and just doing whatever they could to help me. I'm just so thankful that I have parents that are willing to do that. I definitely agree that everything is fine and great until you get in trouble and your mother works there. <laughs> but I want to tell my mom thank you for always supporting every single thing that I've ever wanted to do or thought about doing. Um, I definitely would not be where I am without her. And I think that I know a lot of people that can say that because she's amazing. <laughs> and I love her very much. And the same thing with my dad. They've supported me so much in all of my decision making. And they never told me like I couldn't do anything if I wanted to do it. They would support me in it. And I'm very grateful for that. Well, I, I can share with you that uh, I know those feelings are mutual <laughs> and how proud your parents are of you, right? Mm -hmm. And some of you touched upon this a little bit, but I want you to go a little deeper. And I want you to think about whether it's a teacher whether it's a group of teachers, whether it's somebody else at the school, whether it's a coach, whether it's a custodian or, or whomever, and you may have to choose another one, <laughs> but who is someone or a group of individuals who stand out to you and why? At Laurel Hill, Miss Lena Steele, she's an angel. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met anyone who didn't love her as a teacher, as a friend, as anything. Everybody loves her. And she is one of the most understanding people ever. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So I have to say, at Ruckel, uh, I don't think she's, she might be Miss Watson. She's a math teacher. And very specific, but when I, you, gra I mean, not graduate, when, after fifth grade, when you go into sixth grade, if you're on the advanced math track or whatever it's called, um, then you go into a class with, say, if you're a sixth grader, it would be seventh graders, or seventh grader, it would be eighth graders. And just that new environment with people that you're not used to working with, it's got, it was really hard. And I, w I mean, I'm good at math, but I definitely was not where I w could be now because of her. And I just thanked her for everything. She did so good, just like very understanding. And she actually wrote in my seventh, I think it was seventh grade yearbook, I expect you to graduate in white. And I had no idea what that meant. And I look back at that now, and I'm like, I'm graduating Y, and my seventh grade math teacher predicted that. And I, I, just, I find that amazing. Like, she can see that in people and see what they can do with their lives. So that's I love it. Yeah. I feel like a defining moment, I mean, it was elementary school, but like the moment that I kind of was like, okay, I need to be serious about this, was my third grade teacher, Miss Brown. I'm a very competitive person and so we would have our little we were doing multiplication tables and we'd have our little rocket ships across the wall and the more you passed the further your rocket ship would be and I messed up on one of the quizzes I think it was like the sevens and I was just rocket distraught ship. like my rocket ship was behind this these few other people and I was like I can't and so I talked to her and I was like hey can I take double quizzes? I'll take, I'll do whatever I need to do. And so I would come up there and she would, she would give me extra quizzes, whatever I wanted to do. But I will say at the end of that first semester, she's the only teacher. She held me at that 89B. She said, you're, you, you've got to be, I'm not, I'm not moving you up. And I will say that was the moment I was like, okay, like I can't, I can't just slide by and do good. This is something I'm going to have to work on. This is something I'm going to have to prioritize and really spend my time if I want to do better and get an A or excel in whatever I'm doing. And I think just having her as my teacher kind of changed my whole mindset on all of that. Wow. So Miss Steele 
teaches what grade? High school math. High school math. Okay. So you think about it. We gave an example of an elementary teacher, a middle school teacher, a high school teacher, and that's what it's really about. It's that elementary teacher that made a difference right away, or that middle school, or that high school teacher. It could have been the front office person. It could have mm -hmm. been, you know, the, the media assistant. But there's so many people who, who want to interact with our students and make a difference. So it's great to hear that. I want you to uh, give me some advice, okay? Which is, so now you're a senior. Uh, I think all of you have been here since kindergarten, correct? And, mm -hmm. uh, and even pre-K. So what is some advice that you could give to me on how we might be able to add something, um, another layer to our school district, or there's something that we could do better as a school district. Hmm. Something that I think me and uh, Baker and Laura, we talked a lot about what it is to be in a small K through 12 school and how that can affect your schooling in general compared to a lot of the bigger schools. And I think something that um, would honestly assist a lot of us is having that opportunity to have more AP classes and I know that in a small school it's hard to get enough people to sign up for those but an online classroom where we can sit into a Crestview or a nice full teacher and just still be able to have that opportunity and experience and go through the same coursework that they get to go through rather than having to drive a distance to do dual enrollment and still not get the same amount of credits. I think having that sort of opportunity would really just enhance the learning experience for all the people beneath me. All right, and what goes through my mind in that is the last two years technologically, you know, we've, we've done a lot of things differently. So now it, you're sitting over there at Baker or you're sitting over there at Laura Hill, you might be in a spot where mm -hmm. you're at a, you see a TV, it might be Niceville, it might be Choctaw, it might be Fort Walton, but you're still able to be there and be a part of that class. Mm -hmm. Now we do not have that yet, okay? <laughs> but uh, that, that's something that is, is a great suggestion. So, and I've actually jotted that down. What else? I, yeah, so I was, like I said, fortunate enough, nice, so there's so many AP opportunities, but I really like that idea because my suggestion would be the SUMA Awards, when we did that at the college with all the schools from Oklahoma County, I really mm -hmm. liked how, I mean, our schools have their rivalries, but I liked how we have that one get together where we're a county as a whole. And I feel like if you could take classes, say, virtually through another school, that would kind of close the gap of not, rivalries aren't bad, but I still like the feeling of Okaloosa County as a whole, or maybe I like the senior, how is that it says well, and not the other grades, but just another day where the whole county is together, maybe a service project with the clubs through all the um, schools in the county as well, but mm -hmm. just building, not having your own school like we are county together, and that, that was a great suggestion by Stella as well. All right. Anything I would else? love to see more electives at the small schools and like more opportunities. Um, and I know that's like we don't have the teachers, we don't have the people, but I feel like if we had more like classes that were more fun, people would be like more motivated and more interested in coming to school and going to these classes, so. All right, so we have uh, making sure that we look at for some of our smaller schools, making sure there's more opportunity to, whether it be advanced placement courses, whether it be electives or just other courses um, in general, and the potential of doing something across the district where schools come together for a, for a type of a service project, okay? and all great, great suggestions, which I appreciate. Do you have any questions for me? Um, well, as we talked, Baker is very small, but we're also kind of overflowing. So do you have like a vision of what we're gonna do with everything expanding, especially in the Baker, like in Laurel Hill, the rural areas are definitely expanding with new subdivisions. Do you have a vision for that? So we do. Uh, I'll say it, and then I'm going to give you a, a larger answer, and where, where Baker and Laurel Hill is, a larger answer is going to be the whole northern part of the county. But first, I'd like to say on Baker, one of the things that we're doing is we're looking to do a little something with the cafeteria and how we can enlarge that. Um, it's, it's been challenging right now, but uh, we're looking at how we can enlarge that, looking at bringing in a multi-purpose uh, facility as well to help with uh, a lot of the activities that happen. I'm sure you've been in the gym. Mm -hmm. So you know how 
difficult it is to get to the gym, right? <laughs> yes. So it's going to help with those activities. Plus, it's going to help with when there's inclement weather, uh, you know, where do students go at Baker? Where do they go at Laurel Hill? So the same thing is going to be happening at Laurel Hill where we're looking at a multi-purpose room. Mm -hmm. But the big picture answer to it is, especially the north end of the county, things are growing, right? So we are actually in the process right now of acquiring land to where we're going to build a new school in the next three years or so. And now when you build a new school, that means that things are going to have to be shuffled a little bit. So by doing that, you know, will we alleviate some uh, pressure at Baker or some pressure at another school? Or will it we rezone to where maybe some kids funnel over to Baker? Mm -hmm. So there's the, the big picture, which is building some new schools, which alleviates some of the overcrowding that might be at some schools, and it helps us to propel forward. Uh, but then there's specific things that we're doing at your schools as well to add some capacity. And we're also looking at the central part of the county as well in the next three years of building a new school as well. Any other questions? No. <laughs> all right. Well, I just want to say to you all, again, I could have never sat in your seat as a senior to be able to have this conversation. Never in a million years. And you guys are great examples of the students that we have in this school district. I say all the time where some adults might say, you know, if our hands are in the future, if our future is in the hands of today's kids, we're in trouble. I say, no way. We're, we're in a bright spot. The kids here in Okaloosa County, I think, uh, do an absolutely great job uh, representing their schools and representing this school district well. And when you guys go off next year, whether it's to UNF, whether it's to UCF, or whether it's the Air Force Academy, I have no doubt that you're going to make us proud. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>